Vinyl Community. I'm back again for another video. This time I am covering vinyl ripping and my experience with the Vinyl Studio software. Um, so if you're like me, you know, you can't take your record player everywhere you go. Um, as much as I'd like to listen to vinyl, I have to say most of my listening, especially now, is purely digital. And as much as I'd like to take my record player everywhere, I just can't. And so, you know, listening to vinyl for me is a very premium experience. It's like that $100 steak dinner that you crave. But <laughs> more often than not, I am in the gutter eating away at McDonald's hamburgers. So uh, it, it's just not something that I get to do that often, unfortunately. Uh, but I am not an analog purist. I prefer it, but I think digital can be done uh, quite well as well. Um, but, you know, sometimes, you know, some of these things that are released on vinyl just are not available digitally. So just to give you a few examples. So Third Man Records has a wonderful fan club. Uh, most of their releases do not or have not been released digitally. So this Johnny Cash concert from 1973, uh, which was one of their drops from this year, is a fantastic piece. And I wanted to have it digitally so I can listen to it on the road. A lot of records uh, dropped in the 50s, early 60s. You know, they have never had a release digitally, even on CD. So here's an example. Um, this did get a stereo release. This is the Three Sounds. I think this was their second record on Blue Note. Um, they often get disregarded, but their record's actually quite good. Um, it did get a stereo release from Analog Productions, but this is the mono version. And, you know, I sometimes really want that Rudy Van Gilder sound. So this is one that I did convert. Um, I'm a fan of 80s re-edits and reworks, and technically they're not legal. <laughs> uh, this is one from the uh, Beat Conductor. Um, you know, they used to have some of the stuff on Bandcamp, but even Bandcamp is clamping down, so the only way to get it is on vinyl. And it's kind of funny, because it was probably mastered digitally. But this is a, another example of, you know, some 80s classic hits from Hall & Oates and uh, Talking Heads, uh, B-52s, that, hey, I wanted to do a digital cut of. So, those are just a few examples. So, in this video, I'm going to be talking a little bit about, you know, how to rip, you know, what you need and then I'm going to go into the Vinyl Studio software uh, give you a sample or two of what it's like I'm not going to go in depth in all the features because it has a bunch of features but you know if you're already an experienced ripper I'm putting in track marks down below you can skip ahead that's fine and maybe you got to this point and said forget this <laughs> thank you for watching thus far and let's get into it okay so the key component to turning your analog sound from your vinyl record to something digital is what we call an A to D converter or analog to digital converter. If you have a USB turntable, you're in luck. It's already built in for you, but if you're like me, you're gonna have to get a separate device. So, you know, there are many ways to do this. An easy approach uh, if you have a laptop or a MacBook, is to connect um, your line into your laptop via a RCA to stereo jack cable. Um, I personally don't recommend this because the analog to digital converters that they put in laptops are really not that great. They're very budget. To me, they sound very tinny. Um, it will work at the end of the day if you want to do something really, really cheaply. Now, a step up from that is to buy a device like this from Digit Now. Uh, it's called an audio grabber. Um, I got mine for about $14 on Amazon, and there's several like it. Um, this will do the job pretty easily. Um, it basically connects to your laptop via USB connection. Um, there are some other options out there. One of the most popular ones in North America is this unit by Roxio. So Roxio likes to package their A to D converter uh, with their in-house uh, ripping software. 
Uh, I have used this before. Uh, the solution works fine in my experience. Uh, it'll get the job done. But, you know, honestly, compared to what I'm going to show you, I would say it's a little bit limiting. They, they really oversimplify things. Now, personally, I did not have a laptop for the longest time, and it wasn't until COVID uh, that I really got forced into purchasing one for my daughter's online schooling. Now, for the longest time, for my vinyl rips, I was using a portable recorder like this one from Tascam. Um, this cost me just about a hundred dollars, and you know it. It did quite fine. I mean, I really didn't have a whole lot of people complain about the audio quality. And, you know, for me, I was just fine with it. Um, the downside to this particular Tascam model was I had to buy attenuators like these to really lower the level of the input going into the recorder. If I didn't have these attenuators, I would get clipping which is basically lost audio signal. And it, it, it's like the sound wars uh, that you hear about where you know people raise the volume super high, but you lose out the high end of the spectrum. Uh, my Tascam was just like this without attenuators put in. So I personally like the route of going a portable with a portable recorder. Um, there are multiple solutions out there that you know you can spend anywhere from 60 bucks to hundreds of hundreds of dollars uh, on a portable recorder. Now for today's, today's purposes I'm going to be using my Sound Devices Mix Pre 3 which really has far better A to D converters than the Tascam. Um, and what I really like about my Mix Pre 3 unit uh, is I have the ability to change the line level signal on the fly so I can check it I can see if I'm going to clip uh, with the task cam it was a little more difficult to do that uh, bear in mind these are just a couple of options that are out there on the market today uh, if you dig around you can find plenty now software wise I started out with audacity and audacity is just a fantastic piece of software um, and in fact it, it's better than some of the commercial software out there on the market and the best thing about it it's free you can't beat it um, it has tons and tons of tools a lot that I never even use because they're more geared towards a studio mu musician but uh, it does have a lot of features like normalization it has a declicker to remove the clicks and pops uh, it has the ability to trim and fade tracks. Um, I have used Audacity for many, many years, and I do recommend it if you're just looking to do this really, really cheaply. But one of the downsides to Audacity is all the track labeling, putting in the artist, the album titles. Um, you know, it's very intensive to do all that. So this really led me to search for a better solution. So this is why I'm talking about Vinyl Studio today. Uh, Vinyl Studio was programmed by Alpine Soft in the UK. And this piece of software is really seriously dedicated to the people that want to rip their LPs to digital. Um, and it has all the features that you would get in Audacity, but it's a little more convenient and easier to use. And I'm not going to go into all the features here, and I want to do a quick album conversion for you. When you go out to purchase this software uh, on their website, it, it really comes in two flavors. You get the regular version for $29.95 or the pro version for $49.99. I opted for the pro version for one big reason, and that is the ability to import collections from Discogs. This guy is a huge time saver. This is something that Audacity does not have. You're basically using Discogs metadata to do all the lab labeling and help you set the track breaks. Um, provided that the track lengths were noted, you know, some of the entries don't necessarily note the track lengths, but having that information, the capability to do that is extremely useful. Now, 
For today's demonstration, I'm going to use the 2020 Record Store Day version of Charlie Parker's Jazz at Midnight. This guy was mastered by the master of mastering engineers, Kevin Gray. Um, while it was recorded in the 50s, you know, it, it's not the greatest sounding recording, and there is a, a different digital version out there that was put out on CD, I think maybe 20 years ago. But I really wanted to hear the Kevin Gray version, and so this is one of the ones that I have selected to convert for you today. Okay, let's talk about opening the program up. <clears throat> when you open the program up, you're going to see that you have the ability to record directly into the program via a laptop or import audio from another device. Now, if you have it connected directly to a laptop and you're, uh, you're recording into your laptop directly, you have some great features available at your disposal. So uh, I would like to note that you can set the sensitivity to start recording after your needle has dropped and then you have the ability to stop after the tone arm has been raised. Some other features which are really nice is you can monitor the levels as you're recording and say your turntable can't play at 78 RPM for example you have the ability to convert to 78 RPM directly in the program, which is extremely nice. Now, in today's case, uh, since I'm not recording directly into my laptop, uh, I'm recording into my Mix Pre 3, I've selected two files that I'm going to import, which reflect the A and the B sides of the record. So after selecting the files, this is where I can start letting some of that discogs magic work for me. So I'm going to switch over to Discogs now and with Discogs every LP, CD, tape, etc. gets assigned a release code. And you're going to find this release code in the upper right hand corner of the page. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on it and I'm going to copy it into the Vinyl Studios lookup album at Discogs prompt. Now Click OK and you're ready to move on to the next part of the workflow. There are different elements you'll note in these, these upper hand tabs. Uh, personally, you can move on to the next phase, which is the split tracks. Um, but for me, I like to move to the cleanup audio first. So I'm going to click on this particular tab. And when I do that, it's going to generate a waveform. Uh, and this is a waveform that you can display edit and do a lot of nice filtering. Uh, since I didn't record directly into Vinyl Studio, uh, one of the first things that I always do is I trim out the needle drop transient at the beginning and then I move over to the dead space at the very end of the LP and I trim that up a little bit. Uh, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to apply a filter Again, there's a lot of features that I'm just not going to go over here, but one of the things that I do is I normalize the audio. Uh, so I like to amplify the signal to minus one dB. So this is just boosting your volume so the audio isn't too old. If I have an older LP that has scratches, I can apply a declicker. And for today's demonstration, what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply this. Now, depending on the LP and its condition, you can play with the options here and listen for the results. Um, D-clickers, if they're applied too much, can dull and deaden some of the high frequency responses. So I, I don't always recommend it, um, but the nice thing about Vinyl Studio is it has brass and percussion protections. And one of the biggest features in this particular piece of the workflow that I love is you have the ability to A, B the changes that you've made. So you can turn them totally on or off. So here's just an example for you. So now that your cleanup is done, this is where I move back to the split tracks workflow. This is where another huge Discogs time saver comes in. 
I'm going to click on the lookup track listing button. This is going to bring up all the different variations of the album in Discogs. And you really want to look for a version that sets the track parameters or the track times. Um, if you don't have one, it's going to be a manual approach. I, and there are some features in here that'll help you out, like looking for dead spaces. So what I'm going to do is, now that I found one, I'm going to click on the Use Selected Listing. And I'm going to now make some fine adjustments because it, it does work most of the time, but sometimes you got to make some adjustments to get it just right. Um, and, you know, sometimes I got to adjust things by a few seconds because it gets very close, but sometimes it's not always spot on. So once you're happy with all your adjustments, you just click on Save Tracks. And now you're ready to save them to your format of choice. Um, and you know, you're going to get a variety of opinions out there. I personally, I've become so invested in two formats, MP3 and FLAC. I know there are people that will debate me that, Hey, there's better quality versions out there. Well, guys, I'm sorry. I, I've just invested too much time doing MP3 cuts and FLAC versions. So I do an MP3 version for just portability. I want to load it onto my iPhone or iPod. And then I have a flag version, a high-res flag version for high-res streaming. So the process is very, very simple. One of the nicer features that you have in here is the ability to import right into iTunes if you want. Uh, I am an iTunes user, so you can take advantage of that. But really, all in all, this program has really reduced the amount of time uh, that it takes to convert something over to digital. I mean, I can do something now on the order of about five minutes or less. So this is just a fantastic program. Uh, it saved me a lot of time compared to Audacity, which is very, very manually intensive. And I would yeah, anyway, I'd have you Okay, so that was my experience with vinyl studio and vinyl ripping or at least my history with it I am curious, you know what other people are doing uh, my method is by no means perfect it's not definitive i am curious to hear what other people are doing if they have any recommendations uh high rant district made a comment to me once about upgrading your hardware and yeah sometimes when you upgrade you want to really cut over again and i'm guilty of that a couple times but sometimes uh you know you're, you're good with what you have and now that the, the process has been simplified for me where I can do it in a matter of minutes, um, I think I might be guilty of <laughs> upgrading some of my older recordings. Uh, but anyway, I am curious what you guys do. Do you rip? Are you purely analog? Shoot me a comment down below and I'll catch you next time. Oh.